So, try and keep it short so I can upload it. Um, this is about setting up a six screw tremolo system. Um, and just a quick thing to say that if you've got a six classical six screw tremolo, um, this thing will float beautifully and stay in tune, providing you have your nut sorted out and there's no friction at the nut. Now I'm not entirely sure how good that is because it's a Chinese metal thing that I put in. This is just a, a fun parts caster guitar. But I want to show you um, how to set the tremolo in floating mode. Now, like I say, general opinion is people think that the strap tremolo bridge doesn't stay in tune um, and they think it's something to do with the bridge. Well, it isn't. It's to do with the standard things that put your guitar out of tune, which is friction in the nut slots and uh, unreleased slack in your strings. So if you can take care of both of those, your cheapest, nastiest six screw tremolo will stay in tune and play in tune. Okay, so let's say <clears throat> we're we've restrung the guitar and we're going to set the tremolo into float mode. So the first thing you do is you're going to start off by screwing the tremolo claw screws pretty much all the way in. Um, now the thing about setting the tremolo in floating mode is there are sort of three basic modes of tremolo. There's locked off, which for, e for, for ease of operation, locked off is like this when you've screwed the claw all the way in puts loads of tension on the springs and it means that your bridge saddle, um, your bridge plate sits there and doesn't move, right? And if you were trying to push it down and make it work, you could get it to do it, but it actually takes quite a bit of force. But under normal circumstances, that would just stay with no tremolo, stay flat. The other version is you slack it off a little bit so that the plate is still flat, but you have as light a possible downward operation which gives you a nice little shimmer but a lot of people want a floating tremolo which sits like that and gives you not only downward motion but it gives you some backward motion as well to bend notes up realistically i'm not sure how many people i know that um you know use the tremolo that way but it's nice to set it up that way okay so step one screw in the claw the screws all the way in now the next step um, is it is a quite a nifty well the, the the process I'm going to use is called uh, or it's, it's devised by somebody called Galeazzo Frudua Italian Luthier and it's a really simple elegant simple way of doing it and if you write down the steps follow this video and write down the steps um, you can repeat it time and time again the only problem with his method is that it overlooked one little little aspect and I'll tell you about that aspect at the end instead of the beginning because it makes no sense telling you about the beginning because it's all new so i'll do it i'll do it but the bit i'm going to do now isn't in galeazzo frudua's method now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the playing action with the springs pushed all the way in and i'm going to use my gauge and i'm going to start by setting the action half a millimeter lower than i would normally want it Okay, so this is going to be, all intents and purposes, pretty much flat on the deck. And I do this to all the strings. So normally I want 1.5 on the low E, and I'm going to go to 1. Uh, normally I want similar, so I'm going to take this down as well. I'm going to just try and um, work my way across these. It takes a few minutes, obviously. You can get it, get it instantly. But down to about 1 millimeter on these strings. Um, and I don't know if these are actually turning. Was that, was that stripped it? Good God, I think it might have done. Crappy Allen key. Huh. Note to self, throw it away. Okay, and a little bit lower here. And now my target at the top is 1.2 on the treble side. So I want to go again lower than that. So half a millimeter away from 1.2 is 0.7 so that's where I'm aiming for now, <clears throat> let's just get, get there as quick as I can so I can demonstrate this so that's the first thing I'm setting it for 
a half a millimeter lower than my the action I want to end up with when I've got the tremolo set. Now that's easy for me to do because I've already leveled the frets on this guitar. If you're doing it, you you will already know what the lowest action you can have on your guitar, and it will be limited or dictated mainly by the um, the levelness of the frets, right? But that that's slightly different for, for me. I've already le lowered it, leveled it. Okay, so now my action is half a millimeter lower than it should be. Um, sometimes you'll find it starts to sound terrible. Right, that doesn't matter at that point because it's below our normal playing action. I've leveled this guitar for 1.5 millimeters here and 1.2 here, and now it's 1 and 0.7, and it's bound to buzz. But I know that by the time I get into the correct position, a bit later on like this, it's going to raise the action by that about half a millimeter again. So that's the missing bit actually from Fridua's method. Right, so what he says is, he says, you take your guitar, you, he says, do your screws in. I say, set your action half a millimeter lower than you normally have it. Then you get your guitar lead, and you plug this into your tuner, which is hard to see. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't mind that it's on its back at the moment. I'm just going to go with it. Now it's gone out of tune because I obviously lowered the action. I'm going to put it to tune. Okay, so really only two steps so far. Screws all the way in in the back, set your action half a millimeter lower on all strings than you normally would. Then I'm tuning it as it happens to pitch. Now the thing is, what we do to begin the process, we get our tremolo arm, which is lost in all this bird's nest. And the idea is, you want to, um, the idea is if, if your tremolo arm is tilting back, if your plate is tilting back, it says the part of the step is to um, use these post-it notes, right? And you put just enough underneath the bridge so that the bridge sits um, sits level. But actually this is starting out sitting level, so I don't really need to do that bit. So if, you, if your plate is tilting backwards this way, um, just put these put these uh, enough sheets of uh, post-it notes until it sits level and then tune it up again. But we're okay in that respect. So let's assume we've got to that. I didn't have to do it, but you might have to. And that's what this paper is good for. Now the next thing it says to do is take the G, G note, right? And we're gonna now bend the tremolo down until the G goes to an E. And we stick enough, as many sheets of paper underneath until that becomes an E, from a G down to an E. So you see what we're doing? We're kind of pre, pre-setting up the amount of um, downward mo movement, or how, how we're setting how far up the back end has to kick up for the amount of movement we need. So, all right, I've now pushed those under better, and that's. Sharp of E very slightly. Still sharp of E. Okay, there's E. So once you've done that, you can see now that to get there, we've now got a tilt on the back, right? And we've got as many post it notes under there as is required to hold that G string down at an E. Okay, then you tune that one back up to G. And all the others to normal pitch. So everything now is going back to in tune. So you're setting the guitar into tune with its tail kicked up in its floating position. And the miracle bit comes in a minute.
you the grotty strings at the moment, so not the best to demonstrate with. Okay, E. Eight. D. I'm doing it on its back. You could do it in the playing position if you wanted to be particular. It doesn't really make that much difference at this stage. So there's our guitar in tune. Now, if I take out post-it notes, the strings are going to pull this back. And from E, it's going to go sharp again. But here's the fun bit. Take the arm out, put the guitar up on its back, or on its edge, sorry. And we're going to pluck the G string. We can see that it's pretty sharp. And we're going to undo the screws, reducing the tension on the tremolo claw until that G is returned to a G, which it isn't yet. So we're tuning it back to the correct pitch. But in doing so, we're allowing the tremolo plate to rise back up again so that we'll end up back where we were with the plate lifted and the guitar in tune. That's the, this is the miraculous bit. So the paper, the post-it notes, going down, post-it notes were a way of, of setting the amount of float that we want in the, in the tremolo. And that's usually, typically, it, it, it's a certain amount that gives you a tone on the E, uh, sorry, a semitone on the E, a tone on the B string, and a tone and a half on the G string. And we'll sort of demonstrate that in a minute. It, it's usually a fairly accurate. Okay, we're almost at G. And we just, maybe half a turn on each one. I expect we'll find that we'll be on G now. Slightly sh uh, flat of G, so I'll just do half a turn on that one. There you go, there's G. So now you can see we've got the back end tilted up a little bit and clumsy and that's going to stay in that position but you'll see that we've also got and we should get uh, it's not, got no back lighting on here so we should go from slightly sharp of E, E to F. That's our range, okay? Slightly sharp, so it doesn't, and it's on its back, so it's not doing it quite right. But that's the whole um, process. So this is a, a Wilkinson tremolo arm, so um, it has the advantage of a little grub screw in the back here which I can tighten up now, if it will do it. If it's the right size one, it might be a smaller one. No, it's this one. I can tighten this up and that gives me a, a firmer grip on the arm so there's no slot on it. So that's the Galeazzo Frudua method. Um, th so the additional bit that I've added, um, Galeazzo didn't include that bit about setting your um, action half a millimeter um, lower to begin with and what I found I used to find is I would do his method um, and then I would get this set up with the, the amount of tilt on the plate just right for the exact correct range of notes for the bend as we just demonstrated um, but what I'd notice is that it left me naturally with a slightly higher action than I began with um, which I didn't want and uh, because this tilts up and it lifts the saddles with it. So what what happens is if you're not aware of that, you'll probably go, oh, I'll reset my action to where I want it. And as soon as you start adjusting these, you, you reduce the tension on the strings, which means that the uh, springs pull back and eventually, you and that lowers the action, so you take it up a bit more and so on and so on. And, it, and you get caught up in this loop of um, adjusting um, but it's it's kind of changing all the tensions after the fact, so it messes up the setting. So what I found through experimentation was that the amount that it, this lift for this fixed range by doing the 
tuning the G down to E, that, that fixed range of a tone and a half on the G, what I found was that equates for an average um, low action setup like, like mine, it equates to about half a millimeter on each string. So um, by trial and error, I figured that out. And so that I start, the first thing I do is set my lowest workable action, which for me is low because I, I've leveled the frets. For you, it might be whatever is the lowest you can get before the frets buzz. But you start with that action and then take it down half a millimeter. And also I found that half a millimeter on this kind of bridge, if you don't have a measuring device like this, half a millimeter actually equates to one half turn of this screwdriver or a, a little Allen key. So half a turn just happens on each screw happens to be half a millimeter. So if even if you don't have a, a guide, you can do it by I've marked a, you see I've marked a little thing on the end of this and I just stick it in there and I just watch it turn around half away, put it in there, turn around another half. So that gets me to the perfect action. And so I'm low when I begin, but once I've got the tremolo set and floating, then it brings it back up that half a millimeter. And I'm now back to my ideal action here. And if I look at this now, this should be 1.5 millimeters and it's stayed on 1.5 millimeters. There you go. And it's floating uh, like a good one and it'll stay there until I want to lock it down again or do something else. Okay, so it's not a critique of Galeazzo's method. It was just an omission. Um, and I, I keep meaning to get round to emailing him and, and um, telling him this little addition because I think it makes a difference, especially if you're used to a, a consistent and fairly low action. Some people it wouldn't matter so much if the action goes higher, they just get on and play it and have fun. But for some people who like a really low action, it becomes a big deal. So um, yeah, it's, his method was a, just, I mean, it was brilliant when I first discovered it with the post-it notes and to be able to get the same results every time. Um, was brilliant and then just improved that little bit I think by um, controlling the inevitable rise in um, last fret action as I call it or bridge action um, and like I say the thing you don't want to be doing is to try to set that after you've done this because if you do that everything goes um, everything's in interdependent <clears throat> or interlinked you reduce the tension here um, then it's going to um, the springs are going to overpower the strings and so on and so forth and it it just it changes everything you started out with and, and you'll be you'll be amazed to find this is touched back down on the deck after a couple of minutes of fiddling and you don't know why so you've got to have that extra bit that i did right at the beginning okay um if you need to look on uh, google galeazzo frudua f-r-u-d-u-a six screw tremolo um, setup and he will show you the process i've just used um, but just add that first bit in of dropping the action before you begin his process. Drop the action by half a mil. Thank you for watching. I'm going to edit this and hope it's short and uh, see you again soon.